The engine is in. Let's see how a 165 horsepower engine runs in a Kit Fox. We are about to stall and this is our adventures in and around South Africa. Welcome to part 3 of our engine upgrade. In part 1 we found the engine most suited for our mission and in part 2 we went behind the scenes at Edge Performance to see how they built this 165 horsepower beast. In this video my dad and I are on our way to John our AME to follow the installation and answer some of the questions you have about the intercooler all the way to the first taxi test. Alright, so we have the intercooler installed. Can you talk us through some of the details, how it's connected and why it's on the side? The air intake into the engine comes through the air filter. It goes through the compressor section of the turbocharger. As the air is compressed, it heats up. So it goes from the intercooler up through here. Uh, the intercooler, the function of the intercooler is to cool the intake air to increase the density, thereby giving more power. And it goes out the top, across this way, into the intake manifold. The reason it's on the side here is because somehow it's got to be connected to the compressor section of the turbocharger and get air into the uh, intake manifold up here. Finding place to put it inside the cowling was a bit of a challenge. We had to do some modifications to the intercooler itself so that the outlet would fit in nicely within the cowling. On the, bot on the bottom cowl we've built a marker duct which is flush with the cowling which brings fresh air into the air intake and ducts air through here and it's going to seal around this section. The air once it's done its job of cooling through the intercooler will escape down through the back and then out at the back of the cowling. This air filter used to sit here, yeah. and this engine had no temperature issue. So I thought now it's developing 40% more horsepower. Now that's a lot. So now, what do we do with the heat? Yeah. So my thinking is to, by taking the air filter away from here, you get that we're area. improving the efficiency of the radiator. Yeah. What the racing guys say is if you get your oil cooled properly, yeah. then you don't then, have a problem then with you're water. less likely to have a problem with this. Mm. Why did we go with the four blade prop? To start with the basics, um, the function of the propeller is to take engine horsepower and convert it to thrust. Two, three or four blades isn't the critical answer. Well, the real issue is how do you want to deliver the thrust? Two blade prop or a three blade prop can be made with longer blades to absorb the power of the engine, but they will have different performance criteria. Four blades actually just makes it more efficient for acceleration and converting maximum power at the start of a takeoff run and for climb. Um, a three-bladed prop would have done it, but it would have been less efficient at, slow, at slower speeds. And so the goal of this aeroplane is to actually get out of the starting blocks as quickly as possible. Before we continue, I'd like to thank each and every one of you. We've grown from around 2,000 subscribers to over 4,000 subscribers, and it's all thanks to you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so as it really helps us to grow and make more of these videos. And if you ring the little bell icon, you'll be the first to know when the next video is released. While waiting on the prop and a few of the parts, we decided it's time to redo the firewall forward. So what are some of the things you did and had to redo? 
while putting a new engine on there's no point in staying with five or six year old hoses so you'll see all the rubber hoses all the oil hoses all the fuel hoses everything was renewed five or four including a brand new throttle cable specifically for this engine and then the electrics obviously were slightly different uh, between the Rotax 914 and the Edge Performance. So that involved opening up the wiring harness on the inside and also changing some of the engine monitoring parameters. Speaking about the throttle, you guys have to see this. This is one of the coolest things upgraded in the cockpit itself. This throttle is both a normal friction throttle. So it works as any normal throttle cable in an aircraft, but it's also a vernier cable. So by twisting it it'll, clockwise, it'll open the throttle and anti-clockwise, it'll close it for fine adjustments. Today's the day for the first start. There's a lot of anticipation and excitement going around, but there's also a lot of preparation that goes into this. I'm just checking that everything is where it's supposed to be and that I haven't left things undone or loose and intentionally I'm just giving it a third inspection. Can I be the first to mention that it sounds amazing? Um, the runs this morning, the first engine runs this morning were quite successful. Uh, we don't have any leaks or any major issues. We've just got a few little tweaks to do here and there on the engine indication system and see if I can get a few more RPM out of the prop doing st on static RPM, you know, max, max power static RPM, only getting about 5,400. I'd like to get a bit more um, but apart from that it runs very smoothly it doesn't sound as frenetic as the 914 does at full power okay guys with the final Rounding off complete, it's now time for a fresh coat of paint. Let's do this. I'm sure you are eager to know what she weighs, so here it is. Our previous weight came in at 955 pounds. With the new Edge Performance engine, she weighs in at 927 pounds. That's with the engine, four blade prop and bigger 4.4 pound heavier tail wheel. To compare it to the 915 weight, the Freedom Fox weighed in at 932 pounds according to part 3 of Trent Palmer's Operation Cup Killer. That is before the empty prop upgrade that's 20 pounds heavier than the temporary prop he had on. Trent, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Okay guys, it's been a few days finishing the cowling and John has really done an exceptional job. It's now time to start the taxi tests. It's ready to fly. With the test successfully completed, we are super excited to be this far along in the process. It's now time to do the paperwork and a few modifications uh, for heating. And uh, it's going to take a while to do the paperwork, but we are super excited to get flying. So, with the COVID-19 lockdown currently in effect in South Africa, we were unable to get to test flights. So stay tuned for part four when we finally get to flying.
and please consider subscribing so you'll be the first to know when it's released. Please stay safe out there and as always, dream big, fly high and live the adventure.